Before we get to the Fields contract, there are other players that need to provide the data points as to where the market's going to go. And the name that has been discussed the most and will continue to be discussed is Lamar Jackson. Yeah. This situation will be, has been, and until he signs a contract, will continue to be the biggest story in the NFL. We are eight days away from a monumental decision that the Ravens have to make. They're going to tag him if they don't sign him. And I'd be stunned if they sign him between now and next Tuesday. There's been no indication of progress, no indication that that anyone's position has changed dramatically, but we'll get to that in a second as well. It's going to be the exclusive franchise tag or the non-exclusive franchise tag next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, when that window closes. And they could do it before then. They'll probably run it right up to next Monday. Maybe they just get exasperated this week and say, let's just be done with this so there's no further guesswork or or confusion by anyone as to where this stands. But it's going to be non-exclusive, which would allow him to talk to and sign with another team, or exclusive, which basically makes him the sole contractual property of the Ravens, but they could still trade him if they wanted to. It's going to be one of those two, Chris, by next Tuesday, and that's the decision the Ravens are going to have to make. Uh, yeah. I mean, this, I, I mean, of course, would expect one of those two. I'm with you. I don't expect a long-term contract. I, it by far, is lining up to be the number one story of the offseason. I mean, you know, just put it on your schedule, viewers. I mean, once a week we're going to be talking about Lamar Jackson, if not more. I mean, it's, it's crazy where we're at with this conversation. It is. It just it, it it's a team that wants him. He wants the team, but there's some, you know, dysfunction as far as the money's concerned and what's going on there. And you know, I think between that, uh, the, the the story of you know, it doesn't sound like he was involved in the the hiring of Todd Monken, the offensive coordinator of the Ravens, right, Mike? I mean, all those things yeah, line up to they, they they say like. I don't know. Baltimore, I don't think, knows what the hell is going to happen. That That's what it – so, to me, it's just – it's crazy in the fact that you can't talk to anybody right now that has a lean or really knows what's going to go on with this Lamar Jackson situation. And, and, look, I know people get mad at me for being blunt about this, but I continue to believe that this is an example of players who think they're going to save 1% or 2% on their contract and they put themselves in a position where they don't get good advice on what they should do. And it's not just – and I've said this before, but it's important to point this out because I truly believe that players who choose to represent themselves, some of them, not all of them, but some of them are being penny wise and pound foolish because that agent doesn't just send emails to the general manager back and forth and then get some sort of a windfall. Because what did you really do here to earn your 1% or 2% of every dollar I'm going to make? You just sent a few emails. It's more than that. It's helping the player understand what his value is and how to get it. Coming up with a strategy, coming up with a plan. Look at what Deshaun Watson did a year ago with the help of an agent. At a time when there were 20-plus lawsuits hanging over his head, he finagled a trade, and he got a fully guaranteed contract. And it only happened because four teams were at the table, and the Browns got shrugged to the side just at the right time after they pissed off Baker Mayfield, and they got desperate, and they swooped in. Those are all things that happen when you have an agent running the show. When it's just the player and a family member running the show, it's harder to replicate. It's impossible to replicate. They can't compete with what the best firms do, the experienced firms. I'm not saying just go out and hire any old agent. Hire one of the best quarterback agents out there, and it doesn't take many phone calls to figure out who they are. And you, he'd have had a contract by now, and it's a contract he'd be happy with, and this wouldn't be an issue. Oh, and by the way, he'd possibly have other contracts he'd be happy well, with. Well, that's like the a other thing, contract Mike. he'd be happy yeah, with. Right. I know. I, I know, Mike. I that, mean, that, that never gets discussed either. No, well, the shoe I mean. The contract that wasn't yeah. because he doesn't have a marketing firm. Right. Well, no, you know, Mike, you, you've heard me a little through our text. I mean, that that is one of the rumors that's out there is, 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 is that there's been some blown marketing deals, too. You know, with a big time shoe brand, you know, so there's there's being money left on the board across the table right now by all due accounts. And, you know, there's a lot of things here that are, you know, issues, not only for the Raven, I mean, more for the Ravens, you know, but but yet, you know, like what we're talking about, we care about Lamar and want to see him maximize what he can do here. And that's where I just I don't know where this is going to go. I think all options are on the table right now for the Baltimore Ravens, and Lamar Jackson. If you told me he gets, you know, the franchise tag, okay, I expect that. Franchise trade, I'm, yo, I'm not shocked. 
You know, franchise, long-term deal, okay, I'm not shocked. Uh, I think the only thing that would shock me right now is a fully guaranteed contract like Deshaun Watson, right? Just how agents want to throw away, hey, here's the Patrick Mahomes contract. You know, this isn't a standard. This is kind of a one-off type of thing. It's the same thing with Deshaun Watson here. And it's confused the market. It's confused Lamar Jackson. And, you know, I, I'm with you. And I think that uh, I would certainly advise him to take some of the money that I've heard that has been offered out there. And you, you take that and you run with it because it's life-changing. What's happened dating back to September of 2022 because the union is assisting Lamar Jackson in these negotiations I'm since he's not represented. Not thrilled by that either. But, well, 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 because – Look, the union's agenda here is, and I don't think this is going to upset anyone more than I'd other, otherwise upset anyone by saying it, the union wants these quarterback contracts to be fully guaranteed, so you have to push the player, each one that you're assisting, to get a fully guaranteed contract. And then when a player doesn't do a fully guaranteed contract with the help of an agent, you can cross your arms and be mad at the agent for not doing a fully guaranteed contract. It's not as easy as it sounds, and if you get a fully guaranteed contract, maybe you're giving up other things that you would want – in lieu of getting the the fully guaranteed contract. So that and that became an issue on Friday. This one really surprised me. And and here's the dichotomy. Lamar Jackson or someone close to him from time to time is leaking information or the union is leaking information and some of the information is incomplete and some of it is flat out incorrect. The Ravens otherwise are saying nothing out of respect for Lamar Jackson. They don't want to inflame a delicate situation. Yeah. They want to be able to say to Lamar, we haven't said anything to anyone and the Ravens have stuck to that. There have been no leaks. Look, a full proposal was made last August and we don't know what it was. We just know what has been chosen to be leaked, and we've heard it now three different times from three different ESPN personalities, $133 million fully guaranteed. That's what he was offered without other key information, and it's meaningless without knowing other facts. Most importantly, how much injury guarantee would have become fully guaranteed after the first season when they weren't going to cut him after one season and $133 million guaranteed. How much of that vests from Injury to full guarantee after one year, because that is a significant factor as well. The rolling guarantee after the first year. That's never been mentioned by the people leaking to ESPN. It started with Chris Mortensen, continued with Ryan Clark, and most recently Stephen A. Smith. That $133 million number. It's incomplete, and it's disingenuous to push that without asking the next question. Hey, Lamar, or whoever is leaking on behalf of Lamar, how much injury guarantee would have become fully guaranteed after one year because, as a practical matter, that money's guaranteed too. And and somebody's trying to make the Ravens look bad and Lamar look good for saying no thanks to the offer that was on the table last August, Chris. Yeah, I, I, it sounds like that. It definitely sounds like there's a little bit of that going on because, I mean, you're right. That, that to me, is one of the key components, right? I mean, I think if you break down or simplify it for other people, right – what was what was Russell Wilson's total guarantee, Mike, right? It wasn't 130-33, right? It was below that, but I think after the year one invested injuries, then it became more of a, you know, a bigger number than that, and that is an important factor, and I would have a hard time thinking that the NFLPA, the Ravens, or anybody, you know, wouldn't have taken that into account and go, hey, we're not trying to screw you over here after one year and injury or anything like that. So I would think that by all due accounts, that number is probably bigger than that, you know. But again, that that's where it, it seems odd. And I think, again, I think that's where it goes into, hey, it would be great to have an agent to lean on here with this one. But I do think at the end of the day, it just seems like the number one issue here, and they can say with all they want, it just seems to be that Deshaun Watson contract. That seems to be the thing that is holding this up. And, you know, that's uh, unfortunate because I just don't think that's going to get thrown out there to, to really anybody right now at the quarterback position other than maybe if Patrick Mahomes wanted to renegotiate, right? I don't know. I don't think Joe Burrow is going to get that either right now. And I don't love that the NFLPA is kind of fighting for this and making Lamar Jackson the murder of all of this to where he could be the one that gets screwed over by being kind of the, you know, the guy or the poster child here to make it work. So I'm not that's where I wasn't thrilled about the NFLPA's involvement in this conversation, Mike. And and here's the reality. You get the fully guaranteed contract or something like it if you have maximum leverage when you are 
two years away from unrestricted free agency as Lamar Jackson is because he would have to be tagged for one year, tagged for a second year, and then the third year the Ravens would have to choose not to give him a 44% increase on his tender for the second year, which is a 20% bump over this year, which is why non-exclusive versus exclusive is a huge difference because it's $32 million for non-exclusive for one year, $45 million if they go exclusive. But the Kirk Cousins route was tagged once, tagged twice, walk away, and he got a three-year fully guaranteed contract, and he keeps getting fully guaranteed extensions. Now, they're not five years, no. but he was able to utilize the fact that he, he was the rare thing in 2018. A, a quarterback who's on the pass side of the pass-fail line who's available for anyone to sign without having to give up draft picks. That, that used to never happen. Now it's happening with some degree of regularity. It used to never happen, and Cousins maximized his leverage. Watson maximized his leverage by virtue of the fact that the Browns got desperate. The Browns had Baker Mayfield. The Browns flirted with Deshaun Watson just enough to alienate Baker Mayfield, and they got thrown out of the competition, and they wanted to force their way back in. They wanted to trump the, who was it, the Saints, the Falcons, and one other team that was in it for Deshaun Watson, the Panthers, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. And the Browns showed up with that five-year fully guaranteed deal. That's how he got. And see, a good agent would explain to Lamar the difference. If you want to get the Deshaun Watson deal, you got to do the Deshaun Watson thing, starting with saying, hey, Ravens, I want out. I'm never playing for you again. That was the big move that Watson made that laid the foundation for all of this and allowed him to get that deal, despite the fact that he was caught up in one of the uglier off-field controversies we've seen the over the past 20 years, I maybe mean, ever in the yeah, NFL. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, yes. Well, not the uh, Aaron well, Hernandez case. You're maybe, right. Maybe okay, you're ugly, right. There's but, some other ones. Still, it's up there. This was unique, and it was disturbing, and it was troubling, and he still got a fully guaranteed contract despite that. Well, so that's why a good you know. agent could explain that to Lamar. I, I almost feel like, like I, I remember when I was a kid. I've I, I've had this story become relevant for completely different reasons lately. But when I was a kid, and I spotted on the stove the little metal cap over the pilot light, and I start reaching my finger toward it like ET. Yeah, you know, right. Like I'm going to touch that thing, and my mom's telling me. You're you're gonna burn your finger, son. You're gonna burn your finger, and that I wasn't gonna listen to anybody. And I burned my damn finger, and then I learned. And it's a shame that that whoever is close to Lamar, who's in a position to tell him he's gonna burn his finger, uh, is not getting through to him. And and it's un, it's really unfortunate. And that's it drives me crazy. But I'm not gonna shut up about it. People think that we're anti Lamar. We're pro Lamar. If we we're anti Lamar, we'd stand back and cross our arms while he dances on the edge of the cliff. Chris, I don't know how anybody could think that. I mean, we we constantly talk and talk in a way that we go, we wish Lamar would do this because we've been involved in the business for a long time, and we wish he would do this because we think those there's a lot more benefits than what he's doing right now. And we're rooting for him to pull this off right now, but we're reading between the tea leaves and evaluating things from 10,000 feet above, and it don't look very good right now. So that's the problem. And, you know, Mike, I just want to follow up on something I brought up before, too, just to explain this to the people out there listening to the show. Like, Ky his money, total gar or guaranteed at signing, what they offered, the $133 million, is, other than Deshaun Watson, the, the greatest offer in the history of football. I mean, the greatest. Now, yes, we need to see the rest of that. Kyler Murray, $103 million at signing, practical guarantee of $189 million. And what that means is what, Mike? I mean, that yeah, they're not going to cut him after year two when he's made right. all that money, so he's going to get the rest of this year because it would be a salary cap hit of uh, you know $80 million if they let him go. So that's the practical. Russell Wilson has been to two Super Bowls and is in the Hall of Fame conversation only got 124 guaranteed at signing, 161 practical guarantee. Not even Aaron Rodgers is there. So this is, this is again, just to kind of lay the framework for people to understand. The Watson contract is crazy. You explained it. It's why all 31 owners don't like Jimmy Haslam and think he's crazy too because he's, he's caused this issue. And, of course, Steve Bashotti, I'm sure, is the leader of the pack there going, what the hell did that guy do? And then – you know, so there's a lot of things at play here, and you explain the Kirk Cousins things perfectly. The only problem is Lamar, too, it's just more risk in that approach, right, Mike? I mean, we've seen Lamar plays the position unlike anybody we've ever seen ever. 
It's the second year in a row we didn't see Lamar in the month of December. Lamar, unlike Kirk Cousins, does rely on his legs and things to make himself, you know, who he is. Kirk Cousins, that's not part of the package. So it, the risk wasn't as great for him. That's where we want Lamar to be careful here. And I, I just – I don't know where this is going to go, Mike. I, I really don't. I mean, I just – like I said, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets traded here sometimes in the offseason. I, I kind of feel like it's going that way. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And this whole $133 million full guarantee, and again, it's been reported three different times by ESPN without adding the context that we have taken great pains to add. And it's unfortunate. It's dishonest to the audience, frankly. I'm pissing everybody off today. Well, it's been a week, so what the hell? Let's do it. It's dishonest to the audience to not go the rest of the way. It's disingenuous. It's it's not It's not in keeping with the facts. Should we not care about what the facts are? What is fully guaranteed at signing is just part of the piece. And you laid it out. The practical guarantee is what's important. What are you really going to make? Even if it's not fully guaranteed at signing, you're still going to make it because they're not going to take that massive cap hit to cut you or trade you. They're not going to cut you after one year and committing to $133 million. You're going to be around for year two. You're probably going to be around for year three. I mean, we're talking about it with Russell Wilson now. The Broncos would love to tear up that contract and get out of it. <laughs> they're stuck. They're stuck. Because of the rolling guarantee and the idea that the cap charge makes it impossible to move on. Those are all relevant factors. So until we see the whole contract, and, and let's just put out the whole contract, NFLPA, instead of calling Mort or Ryan Clark or Stephen A. Smith and saying, oh, you know, they only gave him $133 million guarantee. They're really trying to screw this guy. Put everything out there for a full analysis. I'm happy to do the full analysis and explain to everyone what it is and let the people decide whether or not Lamar Jackson should have taken it. I got a feeling, Chris, if everything was out there, at a time when we can't agree on anything, the vast majority of people would say, oh, Lamar, oh, Lamar. You better hope they put that back on the table this year. Because, frankly, after last year, I'm not 100% sure that offer is going to come back uh, I, if it's what I think it was. I would I would worry about that. I think that's the other factor we're going to talk about here. I mean, it, it's known that, you know, his decision and not only the injury concern throughout the organization, but, you know, the fact that it, it looked by all due appearances that he didn't want to risk going out there late in the year where I think, you know, you, you talk to people around the league, they feel like there was a chance to do that. Or at least maybe more effort could have I been. Don't fault him. Oh, I, I don't fault him, him either. either. I hear you. He doesn't you. have his financial security. I understand that. Now, if you have an agent, he need, that. that's another example if you have an agent. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I want to make this right. point. If you have an agent, that agent could have been out there running interference. We made that point as it was happening. The agent could have been calling up the people who were calling out Lamar Jackson for not playing and saying, look, look, you got to understand, he doesn't have his contract yet. He's not 100%. He's not putting himself at risk for a team that is yet to give him the financial security he has earned. That's why he's not playing. But right. you don't have anybody to do that for you and push back against the people who were calling him out. No, Continue. no. And, and, Mike, you bring a very good point. But what I would counter to that is part of that problem is him, too. So that, that's where it doesn't hold as much water maybe in years past where you go, wait, that guy didn't get paid. You know, the, the team looked at that and go, wait, we've heard through the organization it's the greatest contract ever except for one guy. So that they're going, wait, it's, it's, I don't know why, why he won't take that. So he's not going to get a lot of like, you know, what I'm. that's what I was trying to get at is he's not going to get a lot of like love or like, oh, man, shucks, Lamar's getting screwed over in the locker room. And, you know, the NFL community, you things, things you hear is, yeah, I think it rubs some people the wrong way in that locker room. And, again, I'm not sitting here. To, I don't know. I'm just saying those are the things you hear out there. And you know me and know I know enough people around to know that that's kind of a thing going around. So, I mean, that, that's it's organization contract. It's where he is in the locker room right now. You know, it's, a, it's worry about the future and what he's going to be. You know, as he gets older, he's getting banged up. He's not as fast anymore. We just talked about the number one running quarterback in football is Justin Fields now. It is no longer Lamar Jackson. He's still amazing. And those are all reasons I worry for Lamar, and I hope he can get something done sooner rather than later. And this is what was odd on Friday. And, and look, I don't want to start anything again with Stephen A. Smith. He's the king of the business, and I give him all the respect that he has earned over the years. But he got on first take and he said that someone from Lamar's camp called him on Thursday and said Lamar has never demanded a fully guaranteed contract from the Ravens. And I was like, what? Like, it's just a given that he wants a fully guaranteed contract. I went back and found 
a conversation between Ryan Clark, who was in that discussion, and Demora Smith, the NFLPA executive director from just a few weeks ago, where it was clear from the context of the conversation and the things Demora Smith said that the union was working on Lamar Jackson's behalf to get him a fully guaranteed contract because right. they want to create this chain of fully guaranteed contracts. There's a collusion grievance that was filed during the season against the owners for refusing to give certain quarterbacks fully guaranteed contracts. And Lamar Jackson is a number one example of guy who's trying to get fully guaranteed contract and can't get one. And then I found the item from September 11. 2022, the Week 1 Sunday Splash Report, yeah. co-authored by Adam Schefter and Chris Mortensen of Stephen A. Smith's Network. Sources told ESPN the Ravens also balked at Jackson's wish for a deal that was fully guaranteed at signing. So, I look, I see, that that's that's the, the danger in this business. You know, we, we go on the air with the caveat that somebody called me and told me something. Well, that's fine. Just because somebody picked you and chose you and called you and told you doesn't mean you have to to just say it like it's true. You know, I, I, I watched the clip. Stephen A. had all the caveats. Like, I don't mean to disrespect any of the great reporters here at ESPN. Well, you know what? You're not disrespecting. You're contradicting. And there's a good chance you're wrong and they're right. Well, I've... Because it's been a given for months that's what Lamar Jackson wants. For months. Right. I don't understand why it's changing now. And it makes me think. It makes me think. That if this truly was someone close to Lamar that said it, Chris, maybe it's a sign that there's a crack in the foundation in this position that he's taken. And maybe there's a chance that the ice is going to thaw a little bit at the 11th hour of the negotiations with the Ravens. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, by all due accounts, hope, hopefully for his sake. I mean, again, I, I, I want to make that clear. I'm rooting for Lamar to get paid. I am. I just don't know if the guaranteed contract thing is realistic. And I understand that. And putting myself in the shoes of a team, a GM, an owner, and all that, I don't think it's realistic. You know, the Browns went down Idiotville last year, and they screwed themselves. <laughs> Sorry. That's what happened. So now they're stuck with it. Okay. But that doesn't mean everybody else gets that from there on out. Please and, direct. Browns, yeah. please direct all yeah. complaints to Christopher, <laughs> to Christopher Davis. Davis. Yeah, that's right. But – yeah, by by all due accounts, too, and, and Stephen A. is the man. You're right. I got tremendous respect for him. But he's not necessarily connected in the NFL. That's not his main thing either. I know he's got connections everywhere. But, you know, there, there's other sports I think he's more connected in, and there's other people at that network when it comes to NFL news that, yeah, I would listen to. And, yeah, there's too many people there that are in the know that have led us to believe, let alone you and I have contacts around the league that have led us to believe that, Lamar, there's no doubt about it, wants the wanted the guaranteed contract. And maybe to your point there, hopefully he's softening that a little bit and maybe that's what he was doing to maybe save some face in the, you know, the 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 public forum there. That's the only way to explain it. That's yeah. the only way to reconcile it. Unless there was a miscommunication during the phone call that Stephen A got that maybe there's some softening, some acknowledgement that this was a mistake and there's another path that needs to be followed as we get closer and closer to decision time. And decision time now is going to be whether the Ravens go $32.4 million non-exclusive or $45 million. That's what he's going to get for one more year if he refuses to do that long-term deal. And it may be an acknowledgement by Lamar that if they go non-exclusive tag and give him an invitation to go out to the market and see what the Falcons would do, what the Panthers would do. Maybe the commanders are lurking in the weeds. That kind of dawned on me last week, Chris. The idea that Ron Rivera is so open with the fact that they're going forward with Sam Howell as QB1. Are they waiting for Lamar Jackson to be available? And then they'll say, well, when we, when, hey, when we said that, we never had any idea the Ravens would give Lamar Jackson a shot at the market. Yeah, we're going to pursue Lamar Jackson. But when somebody does that, are they going to show up with a five-year fully guaranteed contract? I know there are people out there who think – that, that you know, I, and I agree. All it takes is one team. That one team will do it. I'm. I look at what happened to the Browns last year, and I wonder. You know, if you're going to be that team that does it, you better be ready to take the flack behind the scenes when you go to the Biltmore in Arizona for the league meetings in late March. You better be ready to get the cold shoulder. You better be ready to spend a few months as persona non grata. Because we know, and we know the collusion happens. Yeah, it's wrong. Of course, they shouldn't do it, but they do it. They, obviously, they do it. Good luck proving it, but they do it. And that one team that does it had better be ready to spend a period of time being on the wrong end of that, that, that vibe that they're going to get. And maybe stronger than a vibe from the other owners 
that they did something that makes it harder for the rest of them to do business. Yeah, I, no, the, the owners don't want this. I understand that. And I think, hey, listen, we're making a lot of money in the sport. Things are going in the right direction. Guys are getting paid big time. Everything's going in the right direction. Total guaranteed of contracts. Uh, the, I, that's It's not happening yet. It's not happening. Maybe it'll happen one day, and that'll be great, you know? But but it's not going to happen right now, and the NFL owners are going to fight against that. I mean, the the rules are, yeah, they're protecting the quarterbacks. We know that quarterbacks can play longer. It's still dangerous to offer guaranteed contracts to guys. I mean, yeah, you know, there's there's big injuries every year. Ask Tua, you know, ask those guys. Oh, hey, yeah, we gave you a guaranteed contract. Oh, wait, we're we have a concussion problem now. Oh no, so we're on the hook for three more years of you know seventy million dollars. Oh, great. You can't play anymore. That's just crazy. It's a it's a crazy sport. Things are going in the right direction. the the Watson The Watson contract is not the normal. It's not, and uh, that's where I think everything's been messed up here for Lamar Jackson and his camp. From time to time, there'll be a push, and usually it happens around NBA free agency, where people will say. But it happens in other pockets, and and I've noticed it come up more and more often. This 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 cry for fully guaranteed contracts for all NFL players. And if that ever happens, there will be two very significant realities that people aren't considering. Number one, there will never be a contract longer than three years. And most will be one or two years. If all of a sudden there was an agreement between the league and the union that all contracts would be fully guaranteed, you're going to have shorter term deals. You're going to have guys who have less overall security and they're going to be in a position sooner than later where they have to pack up and move to another city. And if that's, that's fine. You just have to accept that that's what's going to happen. The contracts will be shorter term. I don't know that's good for the sport to have even more player movement than we already have because you want fans to feel connected to the players. You want them to buy the jerseys. You want the players to be with the teams for more than a year or two. Secondly, Chris, what you get into is the point you just made. You've got a star player who isn't playing but is getting paid. So you know what happens? Somebody else is out there playing. Somebody else is out there generating the yardage, taking the risks, scoring the touchdowns, and there's less money for the guys who are actually getting it done because the guy who's gotten the huge guaranteed contract isn't doing anything to add to the effort on the field. That's not fair to the guys who get stuck playing for a hell of a lot less money than they could be making or should be making because the salary cap is skewed in the direction of the guy who's not playing. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, I you know, again, I, I think we're, we're on the right track here. I don't know if total guarantees are ever going to be a thing in the NFL. It's the most brutal sport in in the world. I mean, I know there's some other ones that are probably, you know, UFC or whatever, but team sport, it's the most brutal sport in the world. It's guaranteed contracts. I have a hard time. And I will say too, the fact that there's not guaranteed contracts, I think are a big reason why the sport's great. It's one of the big reasons that we talk about and we see upsets with teams where we go, wait, this team stinks. They're beating the number three seed in the playoffs here in week 16 or week 17 because there's guys on the field, Mike, that we always talk about. They're going, wait, I'm free next year, or I got one year left on my deal, and it's not guaranteed, so I got to play good. The, the camera's still on me. The film's still on me. I got to I, – and those are things that make the sport great from that sense. And I think those are some of the things people take for granted about football and don't, and, you know, don't realize maybe what's not – so great about the M MLB or, or NBA at the end of the year is because that's not a thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't expect it anytime soon, well, I think is what we're saying here. And the salary cap's been around for 30 years and it works because it does keep the talent level relatively similar. I remember back in the 70s, you would have these games. It felt like every other week there'd be, you know, 53 to 10. You just had a huge disparity in the talent. There were the great teams. There were the bad teams. And, you know, there was a cut in the middle. Now it feels more compressed, even though the Chiefs have – and that's why it makes it so significant when a team like the Chiefs win yeah. two Super Bowls in a three-year stretch – because it's harder than ever. Look at what they had to do to get to the Super Bowl. Look at what they had to do to win the Super Bowl. You don't have dominant teams. You don't have these blowouts anymore. And the salary cap works. And if you start guaranteeing every contract, 
it's going to skew things. You know, if, if you're talking about anything more than a one or a two year deal and that's going to have other effects as well. It's just something you need to think through. It's easy to just say, oh, let's make all contracts fully guaranteed. It's tougher to pull off and it would have unintended consequences that would hurt the sport and hurt our enjoyment of it and hurt the competitiveness of it. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.